Emily, how's it going? It's going pretty good. I, I was able to watch that um, wonderful presentation, and I'm excited because there's a good segue here. Yeah, it's perfect, and uh, and I, I'm I'm now I'm really just jazzed up about kind of the future of this industry. I love seeing like we are literally watching it progress. You know, from from at least from from where I'm standing, I'm just seeing this this change so quickly, and and it's. It's why we do these events so often is because like what I told you last month doesn't even work again anymore. And, and we really do have to, uh, to keep on the pulse of, of technology, of e-commerce and of, of product and, and product marketing in e-commerce and what that means. So with that said, I'll let you introduce yourself and take it away. Okay. Um, so my name is Emily Page for anyone who's watching and I own a company called Pearl Resourcing, which does branding and packaging for CPG physical products. And so if anyone is interested in that kind of resource, we have that there. I also do consulting. So I offer consulting services to anyone who wants to grow their business. So if anything we talk about today is very inspiring and you want to, um, you know, to get some help implementing some of these things, um, please feel free to check it out. We, I have a free 30 minute giveaway with, to anyone who's watching who wants to do a consult. And I've also listed in the chat, uh, just links to our website. So I'm going to just roll right in because that's the, the best thing to do. Um, let me share my screen. There we go. Okay. And we'll click play. Let's see if that works. So please do let me know in the chat if you cannot, for some reason, see my presentation. Looks so we're going to talk about, um, how to monetize influencer partnerships with strategic product launches. Long title, simple topic. We're basically saying, hey, if you wanted to use influencers, how can you turn a product into money? The outline of the webinars, I'm going to briefly explain why I am an expert and can um, help guide you through this. Um, explain four different options with their pros and cons. We'll go over how to pick the right fit for product. Um, we'll go about the steps to building profitability, the six step process to launching um, a physical product in case you maybe have not done that before. And then we'll quickly go over some three warnings just based on lots of experience that I have that will hopefully save you some issues. If anyone has any Q and A at the very end, you're welcome to chat with me. And then a reminder that there's a free 30 minute growth consulting for anyone who attends and I'd be happy to help dig and dive deeper with your specific product. So I've been doing this for 10 years. Uh, again, I mentioned the two companies that I have, and I have not only built my own, I've built multiple million dollar brands myself. I've launched some and kept them. I still own part of different companies that built that uh, produce over a million dollars in revenue. I've also built and sold brands with influencers and celebrities being able to sell my shares for revenue. Um, I have also launched products into Costco. Those, that's me in front of a Costco pallet, which we did some products. I've worked with very large influencer brands. So these are influencers that are like brands, celebrity brands. So that's William Sonoma, um, Bon Maman. So I've done that Costco project was specifically for Costco that we designed. So I have a lot of experience of like developing products and having them be complex. I've also launched them on both um, in stores and in retail. So I'm just telling you that so that you know, okay, this girl has done this before. I um, mean, I can answer any questions that you might have on that um, scope. So what are the options for ways that you can monetize physical products? Um, commission on existing products is the main thing. And you guys have heard a lot about that kind of a concept where you can give a giveaway or you can do promo codes and utilize people who just really love your brand. Um, I will talk less about this, but it's, uh, I have a short case study. Um, the pros and cons of that is that the pros are that you don't have to reveal a lot to the influencers and get really deeply embedded with them. So when you, um, you know, a lot of influencers can be flighty. They may not want to put a lot of money down. They may not have a lot of money. They might only have influence. They might, that might be their only expertise that they can bring to the table. So the pro of doing this method is that you're free, clean, and clear. You can fire anyone anytime that you want. Um, you don't have to give away a lot, and you can oftentimes get a lot. So this is, I think, a very wonderful and powerful way to continue doing business. We're all very familiar with it. Um, but there are certain times where you might want to consider doing something different. And that is um, something like private label. So where it's a product you're currently already manufacturing and you can offer that to a celebrity influencer. 
that you can see is a good fit. And I've done this a million times. I've done it with, um, I even, with my consulting, I recently helped a um, product producer to actually do this with their spice brand. They were helping um, a celebrity influencer who had a recipe cookbook. And we built a business model where they took their existing products, existing structural packaging and recipe formulations, and just basically help them to put their own label and branding on it. And the pros, um, the pros to this is that, you know, you, number one, private label is helpful to help you grow volume. So as you're building your brand, let's say you're making shoes and you don't have that much audience. If you can get a celebrity to be able to white label your product, then you're able to get certain um, economies of scale that will allow you to grow your brand and make more profit on your own product. So that's a, a positive thing. And you can also do it. Um, I've seen some brands even do private label offerings where maybe they offer a chocolate bar with a celebrity um, endorsement. So like Under Armour is a great example with The Rock, how they've done kind of like a private label, a mix between um, these concepts where they let The Rock be the person who designed one particular t-shirt and he gets some kind of a commission. So it's a blend and hybrid between kind of a one and two. Uh, the third option is a launch of a unique product. So one specific to that influencer where you can actually like sit down with them and create a brand new thing that would, that they, either they own or that you and your brand own, and they are the ones who are promoting it and who, uh, the pro of this kind of a concept is that the more unique your product is, the harder it is for anyone else to knock it off and take away your profits in the long run. So you can actually build a whole brand that in the long run could be sold. That could be a, um, you know, you have a person who's forever invested in promoting that product. So there's a lot of bonuses of actually creating a unique product for some celebrity influencer and having them put their name and their money behind it. You get their support and you get a long-term asset. The last piece is a business partnership, which again, all of these I'll have case studies in a second. Um, the business partnership is, is even more so of a long-term play where you really believe in that person, that celebrity influencer. You really want to be there for the long run. You trust them. They have cash and skin in the game, which is the bonus. And so you're able to build a long-term asset that you'll be able to sell and make, you know, um, in terms of long-term profits, that is your best play. That's the other pro of that type of a, a relationship is that, you know, you can build something that could actually become its own thing. And, and, um, I'll give you some examples of that in a second. So in terms of commission and, um, and getting, giving away free product or giving promo codes, a great brand to look at is shock zero. I work with them um, as a consultant and we helped them. We are helping them in a lot of different areas uh, in retail and growing their online commerce platform. But really the thing that you can learn from them is that they've really successfully been able to generate both content um, audience and influence just by really um, reaching out to people and offering them products. And the reason why this really works well is because people are already invested in their brand. Keto, keto is like very popular people who need, who need, they need this for their health or they need it to be able to stay on track in their diet. Uh, this brand has been very successfully been able to do that. The biggest cons to it is that, you know, you don't own, you don't own an asset in those relationships. You never get to completely capture the relationships of that person who's being your celebrity influencer. And if at any time that they change their mind or they start to hate you, <laughs> you know, like then you, you don't own that person's voice. And so I would say that that is the downside. This is a great fit for someone who's building their specific brand and who's able to get access to fans who are already in love with their product or would be in love with their product. Um, this is an example of a private label client that we did with the celebrity influencer, uh, Kimberly Snyder. She's very famous for writing uh, the beauty detox books with Deepak Chopra. She's been on Oprah. She's very, um, she's been a celebrity nutritionist for like all of these different stars. If you go to her website, mysaluna.com. And anyway, um, we have, we built for her private label products. So we did some of the structural design for her beauty line and also for her vitamin line, which she sells on her website, along with all these other you know, digital assets. And the reason why this was a great choice for her specifically is because she wanted her voice to be focused on being an influencer, being able to talk to people, and by utilizing and capitalizing on an existing brand's products, she's able to get an amazing offering for her clients or for her customers without having for her to invest too much money up front. 
And on your side, you know, you get to have the advantage of having sometimes celebrities will even endorse you as the manufacturer or formulator on the back of the packaging. And so that can allow for you to be able to brag on your company website that you are partnering with this person to do their own private label. You can give them rights and access to your recipes and say like it's exclusive to them, or you can literally take what you already are making exactly for yourself and just slap a new label on it. So again, I find this to be a very profitable way to grow and scale a business if you are you know, in the very beginning phases of your, um, of your brand building and if that's gonna be able to help you get more volume. Another thing you can do is, and this is an example that I did with um, Lauren Bongiorno, who is you know, a smaller size influencer. She is specifically niched in the diabetic health world. And so she is doing coaching for people who have diabetes. She's been a Nike celebrity influencer. Um, she's been featured on um, type beyond type one as a board member and she's been interviewed, so, which is a very, diabetes is a massive um, audience because this is a very big global disease. And so she wanted to be able to create a unique offering of a physical product to serve her customers who basically have um, type one diabetes. So we helped her to curate her own custom um, diabetic health journal and the bonus of this is that this is a product that, and an asset that she will forever continue to sell and that has become a signature staple for her brand. And the way that this has helped her is that it's added authority to her. It's created uh, the perception of deeper relationships and authority. And for us, it's allowed us to have an asset where we're continually getting visibility up as she grows. We grow with her. We get, we get more visibility every time that she sells a brand new book. Um, and then we also get a regular asset where we're continually selling this product and we get to make profit, you know, after we've built it, that continues to come back in. Um, this particular product, we also assisted with the creation of a Kickstarter. So a Kickstarter, um, she's a, because she was a smaller brand, we thought that was a really great fit for her. And I would say that with a lot of these physical, launching physical products, brands, it's really a great idea to bring along the, the target audience on the journey and tell the story with them. And so that was an exciting thing we were able to do where we got people excited for six months before this product was actually gonna be shipped to the door um, for people to be able to be making, you know, talking about it, voting on the Diabetic Health Journal's cover, the cover of the content. She was able to really use this as a piece to talk to her audience. And then we were able to get access to those people because we were a part of this product launch. Um, the next influence is when you become a business partner. So Jocko Willink, who is a top 10 business podcast, um, he's a retired Navy SEAL, an author, a best-selling author of Extreme Ownership, um, and he loves drinking iced tea. And so we actually partnered with him as a business partner. So we're, we owned shares of the business and helped to launch a physical product that became a very valuable asset. After we exceeded a million dollars in revenue, it was just simply generating profit um, both for us as shareholders, but also um, for him as an influencer. And the bonus of this is that he just is so invested. Like it's got his freaking name on it. It's got like a picture of his hand on the front. And I, I, I forgot to include a picture on the back, but there's a picture of his face. <laughs> um, so this product was, is actually an asset that was able to be sold and generate revenue in the long run and in the short run. So how do you pick the right fit? I'm, fit amongst these different um, types of models. You know, you want to go with, uh, first and foremost, you want to serve the problem that the, influ the influencer's audience wants from them. Why is someone following um, Kimberly Snyder from Saluna? Why is someone following Keto? What is their key? Uh, Chalk Zero. They, there's elements that they're trying to get from them. And so those key things um, you want to deliver. You want to give that person experience where they get to be like that influencer. And um, you also want to be sure that your influencer is as just as committed to you. So like, how would you pick one of those options? You only want to work with an influencer who doesn't have a celebrity complex and feel like they are the ones who are bringing the greatest assets to this relationship. Uh, you also want to be sure, you know, what does that audience want to spend money on and what are they currently spending money on? So you need to do analytics on where are they putting their money on other brands that they're following, other people that they're celebrities that they're following? Because it gives you an idea of whether that audience, what that audience actually wants from you so that you can create a business model that's really going to serve, serve the audience of that influencer that you're partnering with. 
And you also want to know, does this influencer get people to take action? There's so many people who've bought followers and people who don't actually get people to put their money where their mouth is. So you need to be sure that that's super clear before you get invested in this. Um, you want to be 100% sure that you're clear also on the costs and risks of these things to start up because you want to pick the lowest step. I've talked to so many people who have a lot of money and they've started brands, invested six figures to build a bunch of inventory for product that they literally were not able to sell. And now they're scrambling to repackage and rebrand. And so I really believe you need to build the business model in a way that gets your customers and the audience to slowly be giving you tells that they're going to be along with you for the, for the long haul. And you also need to figure out how long it will take for you to become profitable with that product. I get regular calls about launching people's RTD ready to drink beverages. And the problem with beverages is that there's such a long, such a large investment in capital to be able to launch that brand that it takes forever for people to become profitable. And so it might be cool, a cool idea, but that doesn't mean it's the right first product for you to launch on a person's brand. For Jocko, for example, we started with dry tea because dry tea was easy to, to turn into iced tea but we didn't have to have a lot of inventory and the shelf life of that product was super long. And then after that, we were able to spend a quarter million dollars launching a ready to drink beverage because we'd already proved the audience and made sure that that was not a high risk action. And um, the ways that you are going to measure this is like most people are just, um, they think about the short term profit. So obviously that's important. You want to be able to hit a certain sales target to be able to cover your investment. You want regular investments to be happening. So sales velocity needs to be high enough based on the interactions of the audience that you have. But you also want to think about the fact that that product that you're building is an asset. So as a celebrity becomes more famous, it's going to continue to grow. So you can think of um, Kylie Jenner's um, lip kit. She, she did exactly what um, she has a business partnership and she's doing private label. It's, combination of those two things. And she's obviously taken that company that she partnered with to the moon because she's so famous. So I think that that's a key thing to thinking about when you're measuring your success. Um, and obviously what you can control is either the quantity that you're going to sell, like with everything we're measuring profit. That's our whole goal. And you can control two different things. So you can pick a celebrity influencer who is able to command, um, a lot of prestige and therefore charge a very high price because you know profit is equal to um, the price times quantity, which is the total revenue minus your total costs. So you can either work with a celebrity influencer who's going to be able to command a very expensive uh, sale price. You can think of Dave Asprey's um, Bulletproof Vitamins. I mean, I bought like $500 worth of vitamins from him. And literally after I looked at them, I realized I could have bought those for $100 at a regular store. Um, or you want to look at someone who's going to command a lot of volume. So that's a high quantity. You want somebody who's going to really have a broad reach. And the, the, a person who has both the ability to command high price and high quantity is going to be your perfect target audience. Um, the steps that we found really work well is include customers in the launch process, create a short and long-term timeline because you need to think about how are we going to cover our costs in the short term and long term. And so what we were doing um, is that we didn't take money out of any business that we've ever launched, you know, within the first two years, because there's such a, well, one to two years, because there's such a long lead time with inventory that the more sales are growing, the more you have to take that cash and put it into the product. So I think a lot of people who start product businesses and work with influencers don't realize that that is a key issue is that if you get super popular, you won't have extra cash. So you need to plan in the short term to hit profitability by keeping the money um, within the business and hitting your total costs. Um, but then in the long term, um, make a plan to sell it. Are you going to sell these products in a store? So we took the Jocko white tea products along with other Jocko um, brands to get into vitamin shop. And we we're able to make a strategic retail play to be able to make sure that that product could be sold. Um, so that was the short and the short term plan was to launch on Amazon, which allowed us to not have to use our own three PL. We could actually utilize someone else's and someone else's audience. So he would have his podcast, talk about selling those products on Amazon and be able to make money in the short run and sell that product. And then we had a long-term retail play. So you want to make sure that that's a part of your business before you ever start it because packaging design, um, net weight of the product is all going to influence your profitability. And you want to be sure that you've built that into the product from the very beginning. Um, you want to plan for strategic placement. And so I would 
you can talk about the use of other influencers to be able to help co cross sell products. Um, we also have done a lot of things with like Amazon where you can do referral codes. So not only do we get paid for the sale of that product, but also a referral fee for just having that celebrity influencer sign up for it. And then they get to have um, a link where basically every time they sell something, they get 5%, 2%, whatever Amazon gives you for selling their own product. Um, I also think that storytelling is important in building a brand. People really want to trust that you love what you're selling and that you're in for the long haul. If you're selling a, like a crappy product um, and you don't explain why that celebrity influencer is there, a part of this process, you can't sell anything. Branding really is everything when it comes to working with an influencer. And so that needs to be a huge part of their story and they need to tell that story on their podcast, their Instagram, everywhere that they go in a very natural way. And I, I think that um, all the people that I listed really have done a wonderful job of not coming across fake, but of really being passionate with they, what they do because they just slip in that passion into everything that they are doing as a celebrity to be able to help sell product. And I also think scaling slow is super important. I talk to people who have been super successful in one area of their life and then they come and tell me they wanna launch a business in physical products and they want to do everything now. And the thing is, your customer wants to be there for that uh, evolution. And you're going to risk so much because the first production run won't be perfect. The taste won't be right. The, the color of your um, <laughs> the paint on the wood of the elements of the home decor that you just designed won't be accurate. And so starting small is really important for you to be able to be profitable throughout the entire process of your launch. Um, for anyone who hasn't done a product before, this is your bit quick, and dirty business building process. You want to go through this ideation part, which is asking yourself these questions that I've just been bringing up. And after you're really clear on your product, your audience, and how that partnership, which of those four partnerships you're going to execute on, then you launch into visual design, which is developing a visual brand and the packaging artwork of that physical product, as well as any other assets so like your website etc and then you want to roll into the structural design which is the packaging the, the actual bottle or jar or box that you're going to put that and sell that product in to ship as well as your custom recipe or custom formulation or custom technology when it comes then you start working on the manufacturing process you, know, you want to be clear that you have prototypes you want to be clear that the factory partner that you're working with whether that's yourself or someone else really understands what your needs are in the short and long run and we'll be able to meet them. Uh, and then you want to get costing based on your smallest order, but then also on future orders as you get larger so that you're sure this manufacturing partner will help you to save prop, like make money the more that you sell. You then have to think through your shipping. So like, how are you going to get that to someone? Are you going to use a 3PL? Are you going to use an Amazon, Amazon's um, FBA? Or are you going to do it yourself? Sometimes celebrity influencers like Lauren was doing that herself in the very beginning. She didn't want to pay someone else to do it. And it was such a great experience for her because she learned to appreciate <laughs> and pay other people to help with that. Um, and then lastly, you want to think about your commerce strategy. So where will we sell this? Is it going to be in retail or online stores? And you want to have a slow scale. Like, you know, you want to know if I'm starting on my own Shopify page and Amazon, then when do I end up selling on walmart.com? When do I end up going into retail? You want to write all that stuff out and design your product specifically to match that scale um, that you end up doing. And I, I would say that the most important piece uh, is really building a unique brand that builds trust. So people follow celebrity influencers because they want to be like them. They want to look like them. They want to live the life that they live. And that's really one of the key pieces for storytelling for that celebrity is that they need to be able to say, I use this product. I love it. They should even tell people if something goes wrong, like there's a bad quality rub production run. We've had that happen once um, where a few, um, we were selling celebrity mugs for one of these influencers and it was breaking in transit. So they went on their um, Instagram and stories and told people, Hey, this is breaking. If this happens to you, I apologize. Just send us a DM and we'll re refund it instantly. Um, that commitment to, so that's a commitment that telling the story builds brand loyalty in the long run for that uh, specific product, which is really what we want. Uh, and Derek, if you want to um, send me a quick text to just remind me what time you want me to end, because I wasn't sure. Um,
we started and, and I also late, want to, so uh, if you, if you want to keep going, you can uh, for at least three minutes. Okay, three minutes. Yeah. So that's the same thing. Uh, the other warnings that I would give you is that contracts are crucial. Be really sure that you get skin in the game from what any influencers that you're participating they owe you as much as you owe them, and it needs to be really clear. You want to have as much control as possible and really define your responsibilities. Um, I again buy and start small. You want to prove the concept, make the customers a part of the story, tell people you sold out. It's great PR. Um, focus on being profitable the entire way. And like, you know, so how can you do that? Make a strategy from the very beginning to win and focus constantly on building sincere loyalty. So give refunds. Don't neglect customer service. A ton of people who do um, celebrity influencer stuff I've noticed seem to do that where they think that they can just delegate it, make this whole thing, something that's there for the long run and you're going to be profitable. If anyone has any questions, please be sure to um, either DM me or contact me through my website. Um, again, I offer consulting to anybody who wants to build a profitable business. Uh, and I'm offering 30 minutes to anybody who is an attendee and Derek, I believe has posted that in the chat as well as my links to my LinkedIn. I'm, everyone's welcome to add me on LinkedIn. We're, we're all friends here and trying to make money and there's, um, I'm happy to, to make a deeper connection with you. I love it. And oh my gosh, like some of the brands that you were showing there, I said in chat, is anyone else jealous of, of Emily's straight product branding skills? It was just amazing. And uh, you, it's, you. It, this is perfect. You laid out exactly how to co-brand with celebrities or other partners, which could even be brand partners. I think people can think about it in that way. And, uh, and it's, it, this actually perfectly aligns with Donna's session on keeping influencers on brand and, and speaking more to one of your last slides, which was on creating that unique brand story. So we're going to have a perfect segue in, into the next session. Emily, thanks so much. If you guys are thinking about co-branding, I mean, reach out to her. This is, she can help you finalize strategy, execute on this plan. If you've got an influencer that you're just crushing it with, you can take it to the next level with them. Bring in Emily and the three of you can create a powerhouse product that can move, move quickly. So thank, thank you again, Emily.